Hello friends, welcome to Spicy Cat Colors. This is going to be a 3-4, 3-4, 3-fur. Gotta say it right, Kathy. 3-fur. First of all, welcome to my channel. And I am going to show you a flip through. We're going to do that first. And then I guess the 2 and 3-fur, which I will timestamp below, will be we're going to color a page. And while I'm coloring, I am going to do the coloring habits tag. So if you're just here to see the flip, let's do that. So then you can head on to whatever else you need to do. And if you've already seen the book and you just want to hang out and color with me, check the timestamp in the description. So I have seen the circulism art books on YouTube, Instagram, all over. They've intrigued me. I've wanted to purchase them and I've held off until I saw this one. I do not know if it's new or not. The concept of these books is um, color by number, I guess. The difference that sets them apart is they do a very shiny paper um, and it's all circles, hence circulism. So this is their Mandala Shade book. It is from Eclipse, AJ Quinnell. And what a Mandala Shade means, obviously you can see the mandala and do you see the like 3D shading effect? So this intrigued me. There was another mandala book. There are a couple animal books out there. So this is my first one. They are a little more um, pricey in the Amazon color by number book market, but I think everyone I, has raved about them that has them. And I, like I said, had to dive in. So we're doing this. Um, the back here is your color palette. There are 24 colors. I do like that they list them as well as give what they consider the shade to be in a nice large circle. When you open the book, there is, and there's gonna be some glare, I can't avoid it unless I turn the lights off, um, because the paper. It's, I don't know that it's thicker, but it's because it's this shiny, I don't know if it's marker paper, I don't know. But <laughs> there is another, um, color palette and then there are spots so you can test your own color markers and then we dive right in the only which I'm not sure how it could be corrected the only negative I see so far is that I am ready to do my page and there is not a color palette frequently color by numbers will have the palette along the bottom of the page or on the back of the previous page so you can easily reference it. I will need to either write down on a cheat sheet or I could tear this out and have it, um, and maybe that's their intention, just pull it out every time. Or I can make a photocopy, a color photocopy of that or the back. Or if I knew I wanted to use the same 24 um, markers, I could mark them. Again, those are all a lot of ifs. I would prefer to just have even the names, if it's not the examples, printed right here to reference. So all of these are going to be just different mandalas. So I'm going to try and probably go through this quickly after I give you a little bit of a detail. So the numbers themselves are, let's see how well this camera works very light. You can just barely see it's a very light gray. So it's still easy enough to see for me. Um, if you have a, you know, visual impairment or issues, I'm not sure, but I can see it clearly when I'm going to color. Um, even the small ones, the font size is the same. So the size of the font for the number in the big circles, it's the same size in the smaller circle. It might fill up the whole smaller circle, but it's the same size. And then I do like that the pages all have a background color. I find that fun and I'm interested to see how it, um, how it plays into the color choices they've given you. These would be a little harder for me to be a rule breaker frequently on, um, 
color by numbers. If I don't like the palette, I change it out to whatever I want. And I'm not sure if the background color is meant to be so it coordinates. I will we'll find out by the end of this video when I pick one. I'm not sure which one will do. These are all kind of basic mandala designs, which is why I'm going through rather quickly. I just want you to be able to see them. Again, the glare is due to this super shiny paper. I will be using markers on it primarily. I don't know how other mediums would work, but there's 30 pages in here, so I could certainly test it out if I chose to do so. They're very nice mandalas. The other suggestion, which I think all mandala books, because if it's a true mandala, it's only this big, it's the same height as it is width, could really be the square, like an eight by eight book. Again, I don't work in publishing industry as far as costs, maybe the costs would be more. Um, I just would find that easier, more portable for me, and it would just, your image would fill the page. You wouldn't have a lot of dead space. However, this outer dead space, since it's colored, makes it feel inclusive. And like what I will do in other similar books that aren't a colored background, I'll decorate it. I will put stickers down. I will doodle. It's your book, your page. You can do what you want. Ooh, this one's interesting. <laughs> a lot of the designs are just very pretty to me. Now here's the circle, circulism, circle mandala. <laughs> pretty cool. Maybe we'll do that one. These are itty bitties. And getting close to the end. I did say there were 30 pages. These are not perforated. And the backs, I didn't mention it, but you could obviously see are a solid black. We have an extra one on the back with another color palette. So I believe their intent is to pull, they would have you pull out one of these sheets so you could use it. But since this is the same as the one at the front, you would be able to try out four different mediums to um, to have set up, which is a nice. And then there's also this nice thicker white, which would also be a good blotter page. So that is the flip through portion. I'm going to pause you while I pick a page and grab my colors and then we will get into the chat and tag portion. Okay, we're back. I'm doing the circle circulism page. I did end up tearing this, cutting it. I didn't have an X-Acto knife. And this only uses nine colors. The other thing I should have noted in the flip through is it would be nice to know just the colors I am going to need on the side. So I have an assortment, you probably can't see, of permanent markers. We're going to give those a try. Um, I have pen and gear, Crayola take notes. Oh, no Sharpies, but I do have one um, Bic. So let's get into this and go into the coloring habits tag. So maybe we should zoom in a little bit. Whoop. So much stuff all the time. Okay, I'm going to just work from the center out. Is that the best way? And we'll see how this goes. So the coloring tag I'm doing is the coloring habits tag. It was created by, I'm going to put my questions right here, by Sassy Coloring. I will tag, or not tag, put the video for the original down in my description as well as the eye in the sky. I don't remember how long this has been out. No one has tagged me that I know of. I am so far behind on watching videos, my friends. And commenting, I've had a few blips of time where I could watch, but now I need to go back and comment. So, we shall see. I guess this page isn't going to really show me if the background plays into the um, the end image since this one's gray. I kind of like that it's gray. You can't tell when I'm messy. 
but okay back to the tag and not so much the coloring page so there's nobody that I know of that tagged me I will say as I do in any of the videos where I do a tag um, you are welcome to tag me just please send me a message on Instagram or comment on one of my videos I do see those messages again I do not always get to reply right away but that way um, I I will know immediately instead of by the time I seriously some people's videos it's like two months after they post them before I get to watch them I still watch them because I love them but I just wanted to let you know that could be the case so um, since nobody tagged me I am going to latch on and say that Nikki and that Agra tagged me because hers was the last of this tag um, videos I've watched and I don't remember I think she tagged a few people but she like most of us do sorry if you hear my cat having a sneezing fit I'm not sure how good the microphone is I'm filming on a new phone um, so Nikki if you are watching this hey thanks for tagging me by just throwing it out there that if anybody wants to do this do it so there you go so first question, there's 10 questions all relating to coloring habits. The first question is, do you have a certain place for coloring? Um, currently, when I color at my house, this is the place. I do not have, I have a craft room, which is in chaos, and I don't think I've used it maybe once in, um, once or twice in the 10 years we've lived in our home because I have too much stuff. I have a craft room, but I have craft paraphernalia and supplies spread out through three rooms. And the thought of organizing it puts me into such an anxiety spin, I just choose to ignore it. So instead, <laughs> I find a spot. So I'm in my living room and I have um, a table, like a small half size card table, not a rectangle, or a rectangle, not a square set up kind of as my coloring spot and I have a cart one of the rolling carts where most of my supplies fit and that's where I do my coloring and my filming I also will color on the go oh maybe this is a later question or with a friend so but yes I have a dedicated space in my home someday I will tackle that craft room Probably will need an intervention from some friends, but then I could do even so much more than just color. Okay, number two, what time of day do you feel most inspired? I am a nocturnal being. I could be a vampire, a raccoon, a bat. All three of those things are things I would not want to be, but I have always been a night owl and... Um, inspiration I don't know that it's so much that I'm inspired that's usually when I'm awake so that's when I do my coloring is at night in fact right now I think it's two o'clock in the morning when I am filming this I also happen to work an overnight shift so that kind of has me in this um, frame of schedule that if it's my off night from work I tend to try and stay awake all night so I can stay on schedule. It's just better for my well-being. So I think I got all the nines. This is a pretty good page to do. Okay, so number three, can you stop mid-picture or do you have to finish it? Um, not quite sure what the exact it's been a while since I've watched the original sassy coloring video I can stop mid picture usually the only reason I would stop is because I need to go do something else I need to go to work I need to go to bed um, just schedule wise I have to stop and tend to something else so that is the reason I would stop I do not, similar to Nikki, I don't very often like just stop a page 
without finishing it. If I do have to stop and go to work or for whatever reason I had to stop, I will come back and finish it most likely before I start another page. I do, um, yeah, I don't have a whip problem because of that. However, I should say, not that it's a problem to have whips, I also color primarily with markers which allow me to color rather quickly and I don't mess around at this point in my coloring with a lot of shading. Um, there are beautiful pages that so many people create that I know it takes them days and it's like well the first time they put their marker base down or then they go in with pencil shading or they're doing pencils and layering and blending and that takes a lot of time. So if I ever get into any of those media that just by their nature would take longer, I may change that answer. But currently my answer is um, I guess I have to finish it before I move on to another one. Do you, number four, do you eat or drink while coloring? Well, I always have a beverage, currently water nearby. So yes, I drink. I always have a, usually a travel type mug that has a lid. Oh, I went out of the lines. And there's a cat hair on the nib of my marker. Um, and eat, I might have some snacks nearby or I might stop coloring to eat, if that makes sense. But I, it's not like I'm sitting here eating a bag of chips because I'm messy and I would have crumbs and heaven forbid they are Cheetos. And then now that is a new color on the page, Cheeto orange. So I'm going to say yes, I eat or drink while coloring, but um, it's the whole activity. <laughs> I don't actually, I stop my coloring when I put something in my mouth. <laughs> there. Number five, multitasking, music or TV while coloring. I am a multitasker in so many senses of the way. Ask my husband, he'll tell you it drives him nuts. But currently I am coloring and filming. So does that answer the question? Yes, I have always been someone, even when I was in college or high school and was studying, I always at least had to have music on in the background. Usually not TV, because that, you know, I might get pulled into, but I had music on. Coloring primarily when I'm coloring, providing, well, number one, if my husband's home, he's controlling the remote. And part of the reason I like to color in our living room is so that when he is home, we're in the same room together. And I usually don't care what he's watching on TV, but at least that way, if we have something to say to each other, we're in the same proximity. And if he is not at home, I will put on YouTube videos. And I, that's primarily when I get to watch other people's channels is while I'm coloring and that's why I love the good old color and chat because I can work for an hour on a page and catch up with a friend. So yes, I multitask while I'm coloring. Next, number seven, do you only color at home or do you take it on the go? 100% on the go. I would say Nine, uh, maybe 85% of my coloring, like when I show completed pages every month, was done at home. I do have a friend that actually lives nearby me and likes to color. So we will sometimes on my weekends off um, slate a Saturday and say, hey, want to get together? And I usually go to her house because she has a nice, large, well-lit kitchen table and we will sit there all day and color. And our husbands think we're crazy because we're sitting there for 10 hours coloring. But they also love that we have hobbies and each other. And they'll hang out in the garage and watch sports. Watch sports or do whatever they want to do. So I will color with her. I also, when um, we run errands, like the grocery shopping or whatever. I live in a very small town, so... We, if we need to do the shopping, um, we need to drive 
anywhere between 30 to 40 miles, depending on which town and which stores we want to go to. So a lot of times my husband will just do it because he knows how much I dislike it. And I have very bad knees and back issues, which make it painful and difficult to do a lot of walking. So I will, um, I will always grab, usually I just grab like a uh, color by number. Lately, the Disney Baby Mysteries is the one I'll grab because it's a nice small book and I'll grab the markers. I just use the same set of markers and it'll even fit in my purse and I'll take that with. And um, I enjoy going with him and depending on what we're doing, you know, I will go in and do shopping. It's not like I won't. You've seen me do hauls, so obviously it's not like I can't walk, but um, it's a lot if I have to do the grocery store and like Walmart or Target and um, anything else. Basically, I could do like two things and then I need to just sit back with an ice pack and a bottle of Tylenol. So long story long to answer the question. Um, I will pull out a lot of times he will run in and do the shopping. So like where you get our pet supplies at a farm type store, um, tractor supply company <laughs> to be exact. And we just need cat litter, but he might want to look around and get some other things. So he'll go into the store to do the shopping. I will sit in the vehicle and pull out my coloring and that way he can take as long as he wants he knows I don't care <coughs> um, how long he takes because I'm entertaining myself and if I went in the store number one I'd probably find things even in the tractor store that I think I need and want to buy even though we all know I don't need them or I would be bored and then he would feel he has to hurry up. So it saves an argument in our marriage for me to just say, do you need me to go in? I always ask because if he wants me to come with because he needs my opinion on something, I will. But um, otherwise, I will sit in the car in color. So it's very fun. And no one's ever looked at me strange yet. Sometimes I'll film in my car because I'll do like chatty videos, non-coloring non related videos, or I'll do a haul or something. I get more looks when I'm doing that than when I'm sitting there coloring and people walk to and fro. I have not done like in a waiting room, of course, in the past year, which is when I've really amped up my coloring. I have not brought it with to... Um, like a doctor's office or anything, just because with the pandemic, I haven't had a lot of like going or where they even let you sit. I often will go with for other appointments, like my husband's appointments or my mother-in-law's appointments, but I can't really do that anymore. So I've never brought it with. However, I still color on the go because I do the happy color app, the coloring app on, um, I don't know, Google Play is where I found it. So I will color in my app while I am sitting somewhere if I'm waiting. Long, again, if you're a seasoned friend, you already know I'm a chatty Kathy. And if you're a new friend, you've probably figured it out. You won't get a yes or no answer from me. Heck no. We're doing details. Plus, we're coloring circles. Okay, so that was number seven. Interestingly, oh, I should have timed it better. I could have, like, since there's nine colors on my page and ten questions, I could have been, you know, addressing certain questions while I colored that number. And it just so happens that I'm coloring the last number seven dot. And that was question seven. Okay, I know. I'm a weird person. Plus, I just heard my husband open the door, so he will be here shortly. Okay. Then, number eight, do you try to convince people in your life to start coloring? Um, no, I don't hide my coloring. And if people ask or, you know, it's actually my friend that I mentioned that I color with. 
we have been friends for years, like really good friends. And I didn't know she was into coloring and she didn't know I was into coloring. We do crafting, like we make cards and scrapbooking, that kind of stuff, which has a bit of coloring in it. But I was over at her house one day and she had just come back from vacation and she had a Kirby Rosanna's coloring book on the island, kitchen island, that she had with her when she was on vacation. And I'm like, what? I was like, you color? It was like, you know, learning your best friend, I don't know, has some deep, dark secret. So that was over the summer last year, and now we are the worst enablers to each other. So maybe had I tried to convince her, we could have been coloring together sooner, but it's really just another reason for good friends to get together. And yeah, I guess my other friends that I see day to day, I don't try to get them to color, but like I said, I don't hide it so they know I do. And if they are interested, they can join me. I have asked my husband if he is interested because I'm like, you know, there's other people out there. They do this together. We could do split coloring. And he just said no, <laughs> which is okay. <laughs> we each have our own thing. Okay, number nine, do you go back and look at old pictures? Um, yes, whenever I pick up a book. I don't, you know, just have them to look at, but if I pick up a book to color a page in, I always will look at what I've ooh, colored previously in that page or in that book. And um, a lot of times I'm impressed with myself which I don't mean I'm not egotistic or anything because, guys, I'm a hot mess and I make all kinds of mistakes. But um, it's just fun to see what I've done or what choices and then I remember why I chose what I did. And, of course, again, seasoned friends, you know I usually have a story while I'm coloring. I make up a story about the characters or whatever's going on. Oh, we knew she was coming. Hi, Gabby. I have one question left and you're covering it. Um, oh, can you move your paw, please? I think it's something along the lines, if you weren't coloring, think what other hobbies do you have? You probably can't, oh, there you can see Gabby's here since I'm zoomed in. Um, I have, I've always had crafty hobbies. So I previously mentioned scrapbooking, card making, or Card making is my primary hobby at the current moment in my life. I really liked the, I'm just going to side note here, these, I guess, no, they're still kind of patchy. The Crayola Take Notes, I'm not sure if it's the paper or if, I mean, I've been using these, but not that much if they're starting to dry out. I wonder if it's maybe they're not the best for this paper. The, um... Some of them are fine. It's just when I'm doing these large circles, they are, which the red, this one by my thumb, was a pen and gear marker. And the seven, see how it's kind of patchy? We'll see if I go back and do a second layer. And then the same with this one. It's kind of, yeah, not smooth. I'll have to try these with alcohol markers as well. So, yeah, other hobbies. I've also always been an avid reader. So, that is fun. I now, again, talk about multitasking. If I were ever caught up on videos, I would listen. I tend to listen to audiobooks now. More, that's my reading, more than holding and physically reading a book either on a, an ebook or just a paper book, physical. <laughs> I'm like, I can't think of the word. Um, I started audiobooks like books on CD years ago. I used to, my parents were still living. I would travel back and forth. It was about a six hour drive from where I lived to where they, where they lived. And I started doing audiobooks on the drive and I've been hooked ever since. So those are my primary hobbies, I guess. 
paper, coloring, you know, scooping cat poop. It's my life. Just realized that Gabby is now sitting on top of the remaining markers. You'd think. I know I'm jiggling the table. Oh, oh, okay. Maybe she's had enough. Or she's going to just try and plop on top of me. Or just rotate around. <laughs> she's such a funny little girl. But, so, decision. Do I keep filming? Or do I stop you? Or do I try and speed it? Yeah, I'm just going to chat for a little bit. And if nothing else, I'll pause and then show you at the end. So, um, oh, here we go. My husband has now enabled me. So I filmed my um, completed pages for February. I'll link that in um, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. And I had all of you that color or do videos, you know the stack that we get at the end of the month. So I had them all sitting there and he came home from work and I hadn't put them away yet and he was looking at it and we were just talking. And I think I was watching somebody else on YouTube coloring. And he starts with questions. He's like, well, how much do each of those books cost? And immediately in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's looking and he's tallying like how much money is sitting there on the table right in front of me. And he knows how many are also back on the shelf. So I'm like lowballing it. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I usually, I said, you know, four or five bucks, which is the truth. A lot of the books we find are, um, a lot of us like to color, pick up on Amazon, um, $5.00. And under or you know between five and ten and I said but you know some because I also had like my um, artist edition Hannah Lynn in the pile I said you know a lot you know there are some can be more than that it really all just depends on the artist and then he's like well and how many pages are in each book and again I'm like oh my gosh he's like doing some mad math to figure out how much money I've spent on my hobby and I'm like, well, you know, the, I said they usually the average is 30 because, again, I'm thinking like this book is 30. Creative Havens are usually 30-ish. However, then you get, you know, your hundreds or 50s. So I said it can, and that's why I said I go, it can be 30 or, you know, there are those that have 100. And I forget what other question. I think that was his, his two questions. And then he's like, well, I will make a deal with you. <laughs> And I don't know if he had walked in right when I was finished saying like how many pages I'd done. I I don't remember. But he said for every it was for every page you finish, you can earn a quarter to use towards buying new books. Because he also knows, and he has noticed, because we have a shared Amazon account. Um, so it's like, there's no hiding <laughs> when either of us shops. And I had told him, my goal this year is to use what I have. And even, like, complete books, use up supplies, um, instead of just continuing to buy. Which has pushed me to color more. Because, you know, it's like, well, if I want to buy a new set of something, I really need to use up what I have. And you guys have heard me talk about in my goals and other videos that, you know, or even like my 10 books to finish. It's like, I would love to buy more Color Questopia books and Belba Family books and the like. But I have, you know, a few of each of them. So before I'm going to buy another... I need to finish what I have, especially like my Belba ones are like the mystery. So, I mean, the images are going to be different, but it's a mystery. So you don't really know. So it's really the process I enjoy. So why not finish what you have? And not all the Belbas, but the two I have are mystery. So now I 
get a quarter. But he said, and so then I'm like rattling off. I go, oh, look, here's my, this is how many I did in January. And this is how many I did. I had 40 some pages in February. Not that many in January. It was under 30. And he's like, no, no, starting in March. So it's a long month and I am going to color a whole bunch and see how much I've earned, which is kind of fun because I didn't like put myself on any credits um, or, you know, for what I color. I'm just trying to use up what I have, but okay. I am going to pause you while I finish coloring and then I will turn the camera back on and show you the finished page. Okay guys, just wanted to show you this quick because I'm getting invaded. Oh, Gabby, excuse you. Here we have the completed page. I am interested to try it again with alcohol markers. Not sure. Just got a little streaky. Or maybe the Sharpies are better and the Crayolas, like I said, are running out a bit. But yeah, super fast. Excited to do more in this book. So thanks for hanging out with me. If any of you have any of these Circulism art books, let me know what you think, what media you think works best. Um, like I said, I'm really excited to have the Mandela one and yeah, I will do some more. Maybe, I think this was the one that had the large, largest circles. The rest are all a little smaller. I think I'll probably like those better. I'll try another one. Hopefully by the time I do my completed pages for March, I will have a few more done. So have a great day, friends. Thanks for hanging out with me in case nobody has told you lately. You matter. Gabby loves you too. Come on, Gabs. There she is. Always, always nearby and currently matte free. We've been doing lots of brushing. So later, friends.